Now as I was milling the boards, I realized that I had one here that had a pretty significant knot toward the end. Now I may be able to cut some of that away uh, and I'll certainly plane some of the material off the top here, but I'm not gonna get all of it out of there. So what I like to do at, at this stage is fill that knot with epoxy. Um, usually an epoxy that's been dyed to a color that might make it look natural. That'll reinforce it, it'll hold everything together and make this piece usable. And I may wind up just putting that toward the inside of the box, but this way, you know, at least I can still use the piece of wood. So let me grab some epoxy and I'll show you how I do it. I buy my epoxy in large cans for a few reasons. The pumps give me the perfect mixing ratio and I never need to run out to buy epoxy. I've been using the same cans for about two years now. Now the epoxy already has sort of an amber color to it. So you don't really have to add color if you don't want to. But I'm going to add a little bit. I have some trans tint liquid dye here. This is a uh, dark mission brown. Two drops. Mix it thoroughly. And now this is key. Okay, this, this knot has access points on both sides here. So I have to make sure it's completely sealed up before I start pouring epoxy in there. So think of it kind of like, um, almost like a concrete form of some sort where uh, you need to block all possible exit points. And if we tape it up on the edge here and fill it from the top, the epoxy will dry right up against the edge of that tape, which is perfect. I also like to raise up, sort of creating a wall here. I put the tape up about a quarter inch above the surface. You put it right at the corner or even below, you'll, uh, you'll wind up getting spillage. Now slow set epoxy tends to be a little bit more, at least the stuff that I use, the West system stuff is a little more loose like this. Okay, so it's perfect for this application because it'll find its way into those really deep cracks. So just drip it on. Now I've got a few minutes before this starts to set up, so I will add it, let it seep in, and check it in about 30 seconds and just keep adding it as long as it keeps pulling it in. Now you could be a little more aggressive here. We're gonna remove a lot of this material anyway. So by rubbing it across the surface, you're forcing it down into the cracks. So and this is the reason why we do this now because all of this area around the knot, if we did that on the finished piece, that would stain it and would create a problem when it comes time to finish. This way, we'll plane all that material away and all that will be left is the epoxy that's in the cracks. After about six hours, I removed the tape. I then use a block plane to level the dried epoxy to the surface. At this point, I can proceed with the milling process, and this knot will be nice and stable. If you like the look of knots, this is a great way to safely incorporate them into your projects, and they'll look perfectly natural.